Hi friends, welcome to this awesome chapter on circles. This is chapter 10 of our NCRT books. Now a circle has been with us since our childhood and we can all draw circles either using bangles or bowls or even the compass and we can all recognize a circle when given. Now let us see how do we exactly define a circle. So a circle is defined as a collection of coplanar points which are equidistant from a given point and this given point is nothing but the center of the circle. So here the important words are coplanar points and equidistant from a given point. So that means a circle is a plane figure that is it lies on a single plane. Let's say the plane of this notebook. If this is the center or the given point then every point which is at a particular distance let's say at a distance of 5 units so this point or this point or this point or this point or these following points which are all at a distance of 5 units from this particular blue point form a circle. So it's nothing but the same concept that we use in a compass to draw a circle. We put the fixed point or the pointed end of the compass at this blue point and the pencil end at the green points and then just draw a line which connects all these points which are equidistant from the center and we get a circle. So a circle is a collection of coplanar points which are equidistant from the center. Now this distance from the center to the circle or to the points outside is known as the radius or denoted by small r. Now let's look at what is a segment and a sector of a circle. Let's say this is our circle and it has a center at this point, point O. So a sector is nothing but the area between two radii of the circle. So if this is the first radius and this is the second radius, so this area, this particular area is known as the sector. So a sector of a circle is like a piece of a cake from the center of the circle. So if this whole circle was a cake, then this would be one single piece. And if there is a line which cuts the circle like this, then this particular area would be known as the segment of a circle. So this is the segment while this is the sector. Now let's see what is a chord. So if this is our particular circle with the center again at point O, a line segment from one point on the circle to another point on the circle, it's a line segment. So a chord is a line segment with endpoints on the circle. So these endpoints lie on the circle and this forms a chord. So when you look at a chord, you see that it cuts the circle into two different segments. One is the minor segment, this one, and one is the major segment, this one, the bigger one. We also see that if you join point O or the center with the end points of the chord, that is point A and B, these lines, then we will have a sector in between these two radii, this one. So I hope the concepts of sector, segment and chord are clear to us. Now let's see what is a secant. Now if we have a circle and say we have a line such that it passes outside the circle. Now this is not a line segment, it's a line. So it extends in both the directions. And we know we name a line by small letters. So line L. 
so this is a line and we see that it does not interact with the circle at all now what if we had another line line m which passes through the circle now this is line m and we see that it passes through the circle and it intersects the circle in two points point p and point q so these two points form a chord so this line segment pq is a chord while this line m is a secant so a secant is a line which passes through the circle and intersects the circle at two distinct points now what if this line m or the secant was to move away from the center that means in this direction we would have another line which would intersect the circle somewhere here correct and the length of the chord would further decrease or we can say that points p and q would come closer to each other but what would happen if this line moved to such a point that it just glances or touches the circle at just one single point or these points p and q they coincide and form a one single point let's say point t so if this is line n we can say that this line n is the tangent to the circle with center o at point t now a tangent is a line that touches the circle at only one point so if we have a question or a statement which says that there's a line that just touches the circle we have to assume that it is a tangent and it touches the circle only in one point now a tangent and a circle have a very interesting relationship together they have a lot of properties which we use in our daily lives so let's look at the first property so if we have a circle again i'll bring back this circle of ours and it has a center at point o and if i have a particular point on this circle let's call it point p then there can be only one tangent that passes through this point so this will be the only tangent through point p on this particular circle there can be other tangents from other points let's say this one or this one there will be different tangents passing through different points but through this particular point point p there will be only one tangent and the interesting thing is that the radius that is op is always perpendicular to the tangent so this angle is always 90 degrees let's see how we can prove this so if this is a circle with center at o and there's a point p such that line l which passes through p and is tangent to this particular circle so we have this radius op let's denote it by small r now we have to prove that angle op t let's call a point here as t so angle op t is equal to 90 degrees how do we prove this now it's a very simple proof let's assume any point point q on this line now this point q does not coincide with point p let's say p is not equal to point q so when p and q do not coincide and we join oq we'll see that oq is greater than op that's because point q is always outside q is outside the circle always if q were to be inside then we'll have point q somewhere here and we'll see that this line l would cut the circle and not be a tangent but since line l is a tangent l is a tangent that implies that q will always be outside now let's move this q point here somewhere closer to point p 
then also we see that q is outside the circle and oq is greater than op and if we move the point even closer then also point q will be outside and oq will be greater than op so oq is always greater than op only when q and p coincide then we will have oq equal to op so that means op is the shortest distance between o and this line l so op is the shortest distance and we know what is the shortest distance yes it's a perpendicular distance so always the shortest distance is the perpendicular distance and we can easily say that this angle angle opt is a right angle or angle opt is 90 degrees now this is a very important property to remember that the radius at the point of tangency makes a right angle with the tangent we'll talk more about tangents and circles in the next video and i'm sure by the end of this chapter we'll all love to solve problems of circles it's a lot of fun trust me see you bye